Deputy Director General Akhtar Yening was invited to the 30-day payment in Bizo to join the Minister in the Presidency, Honorable Jeff Hadebe, on a panel that aimed to explain how government procurement systems have been improved in pursuit of attaining the goal to pay service providers within the stipulated 30 days. DDG Henning also shared the work done by Status A in helping other government departments set up processes that can help strengthen their payment systems. Well, let me just take you through some of the innovations. As Status A, um, our innovations around SMME and 30 day payments, it doesn't just stop there. Well, I joined Status A in 2006, and my mandate was Operation Clean Audit. So as I've learned at Harvard last year, it's called turnaround strategist or something like that, some fancy name. One of the biggest problems that we had at Statese was that we had uh, invoices that was delivered to various offices. And this is our fault as government. We are also to blame. We don't have a central point of collection of invoices. They are scattered everywhere. The mandate and the priority of the particular budget manager to whom you as a small business have delivered a service to, your invoice goes in the bottom of the drawer and nobody pays attention to it because the next call is from some accounting officer or some uh, user out there that requires some type of information or service and they forget about you. It's a common trend in government departments. Invoices that are subsequently admit, uh, submitted to finance departments were taking long to be processed because we wouldn't know where to put them because they were manually recorded in systems. And you know what happens with human error, eh? The volumes that we received, we received 25,000 invoices per annum at Status A. During peak projects like the census, when we count you, Minister asked me this morning, are we still counting? We're always counting. We run up to 45 to 50,000 invoices in a particular cycle over five to six months when we have surveys. It became a challenge for us to actually manage these type of invoices and the amounts and the volumes. And what started off for us was the fact that service providers would continuously call the accounting officer, my SG, and even myself as the CFO then. And it became intolerable to understand that people are looking for their money and their money is not getting paid to themselves. It was very unfair. We work with the practice of serving the public, serving society. That's what we're doing in our mandate, and that's what we should be doing in our procurement and our payments processes. And we clearly didn't support the growth of any SMME in the, in the, in the country. And it was very clear that we couldn't deal with this effectively. I had done turned around at another department, so I am, I am capable of saying that it's a common problem within all departments. What we then went on to was to try and understand and make our staff also understand the reason why we are here as corporate services, as CFO, as finance, procurement, is for us to be able to pay suppliers for the service that they gave, rendered to us on time, every time. Not just when they choose to, or not when a supplier said, ah, but yeah, I'll, I'll slip you 50 bucks, pay my invoice quickly. It does not work like that for us. Ethics is the basis of how we need to function. The PFMA and the Constitution calls for that basis. So we have no right to be taking the 50 rand, neither should you be offering the 50 rand. It's our service, it's what we are getting paid for as government employees to offer that service. You've offered a service to us, we have a duty and a, and a responsibility to yourself. Our duty and our responsibility extended beyond that and making our staff understand that we are here as public servants to project, to grow SMMEs, businesses in our country, protect the jobs in our country, promote growth of SMMEs and prevent any insolvencies. We had to also make sure obviously compliance is a big thing. Uh, sometimes they call me Dr. No or the compliance monitor of status A. That's our job. We have to remain compliant in terms of our PFMA, the triple PFA and all the regulations. Sorry, I'm smiling. I see one of my old employees sitting in front. So we embarked on a turnaround strategy. We established a unit called the Accounts Payable Unit. Everybody was against me in status. So it's never going to work. When I went to the ASG and said, I'm going to do this, he said to me, never. The calls are still going to keep on coming. I said, ASG, it's an FF system, which I will not tell you what I mean in the, in the acronym of that, 
but staff needs to work, managers need to work, and we need to serve. So the objective of this unit was to make sure that we have a central repository for all our invoices and that we do a reconciliation of all supplier statements. There is until today not a supplier that will walk in to us and say, you haven't paid this invoice, and I pull out the proof and I say, I have. And there's a reconciliation. We don't reconcile supplier statements and therefore we do have issues about suppliers disputing, no, you haven't paid us yet, Sissy. Say, sorry, buddy, try somewhere else. <laughs> we went to look at our work streams. It is so important when minister says processes, processes, processes. We duplicate processes, there's no red tape. There's no red tape. We can unlock and unbottle all of those red tapes. We make it and place it upon ourselves. If you have systems and processes and willing government employees, you can process invoice on average of four to eight days, Minister. That's where we stand. It is in our bulk periods that we look at 15 to 14 to 15 days for processing invoices. Because as I've told you, our summary, our numbers are quite high in peak periods. We did detailed work studies. We know how long it takes every employee to process a particular invoice. So you get timed, not five working days. It needs to move off desks and you're allocated a work lot per person. Um, yes, I'm often accused of being the slave driver. But I need to know what I'm paying that salary for. And it's important for us to work for that salary that we get paid for as government employees. So, as much as I put the thumb of a hard fist and a tight notch on my employees, I went public. We advertised in all newspapers to make sure that all of our suppliers understood our payments protocol and procedure, including our supply chain management practices. We made sure that we send them sample invoices to make sure that all the details that we require is up there in that form. Issues of VAT numbers, tax numbers is cleared at SEM process, not when we do your invoicing. You have to be upfront with us and tell us where you stand. There have been instances when your tax affairs are not up to date. I am a taxpayer myself and I do serve this government. We deduct on behalf of SARS. Sorry, ne? Okay. We also made it very clear, and when we issue an order to yourself, or uh, we make sure that you understand that any invoices that are not compliant with our processes as a supplier, we will not process that invoice. We return it to you, you will reissue that invoice with a new invoice date so that we don't get penalized when it's 45 days late, but the issue is on your side. So most of the big businesses, they cry about this because it messes up their aging on their account side, but our small businesses are quite good. They, they listen to us, okay? And that gave the birth of what we call the invoice tracking system. We're currently uh, rolling out the system to three, four departments, including the presidency. They're utilizing the system. And in consultation with about 12 other government departments, and both at a local level as well, national and local. We make sure that we share what we have. The system was developed first as an Excel spreadsheet in my office with the use of an administrator. And further, it's migrated to MS Access. I'm not going to go through all of the information, but I have to say to yourselves that it's important that there's active management, supervision, robust management, and a leadership of zero tolerance. When we pick up on our reports, that our staff is not performing. So any invoice that's later than 30 days, without a valid explanation, any interest or penalties gets deducted from your salary as a staff member. Um, yeah, you can see I'm always with the union, so. But they understand now. It's about service delivery for the country, not just the individual that's working with me. I love my staff, please. I protect them first, only I'm allowed to fight with them. So the system, just to give you a brief overview, it looks at actually tracking that invoice from the time, or your order, from the time that we have issued that order to you, how fast have you delivered, where, where's the invoice in the process. It's got a whole lot of detail to it and many reports. But what I wanna show you guys is this. 
is that it has a reporting mechanism that even myself as the head of corporate services and the statistician general can tap into the system at any point in time and track the aging of every single invoice that we have. It also makes our national treasury reportings much easier for us. We pull everything off the, off the system. If you look at the little round block on my left hand side, and I guess your right hand side, we can even be able to track and say how many invoices sitting with myself as a budget manager that I have not signed. Although the rule is, when my staff comes to you to sign the invoice, we wait for it. Nothing lies on your desk. Now. Just some of the aging mechanisms that we have in there. This is for me the best, and this is where my SG said to me it's never going to work. At Stats SA, if you've got a valid order number, a supplier number, you, as the service provider, you track your invoice. Public accountability. It's not a staff member telling you that the invoice is laying on the DDG corporate services desk. You can actually track in the key core processes that we utilize to process an invoice. You can say, but it's been laying there for too long. So we make the monitoring not just an internal accounting officer process minister, but we also put it in the hands of the service provider so that you can track where your invoice is. Just impact of the functionality, it also allows us to know how much we owe and who we owe at the end of every period or each day. So once you've rendered the service, you actually become an accrual to us in the system for those who are the accountants like myself and not the statisticians. You can check where you are. We can track how much we owe anybody at any point in time. So our cash flow management in StatsSA is real time. We know what we owe people. We also know what we've committed to in the organization. We pay 99.9% because we're very finicky about statistics, 99.9% .9 in less than 30 days. That 0.1% is the person who slipped that invoice in on day number 29, but we still record it. The next functionalities of this journey of it is to make it our full accrual accounting based module. We've been waiting for a system for a long time for accrual accounting, um, and this will be the basis of our next move as that is a. Minister, our new home has arrived. You've done the start turning and now you know you're coming to do the opening for us soon, I hope, Minister. But one thing I have to ask, say to yourselves, one of our honourable ministers mentioned about big businesses and how they failure to pay SMMEs. We saw it in real lifetime. At Statis say we don't only monitor the SMMEs who provide us a service, but we've just appointed, or we've just moved in two years ago, we appointed a triple uh, a company, one of the big powerhouses, construction company in a consortium to build our new home at Salvaco. Stats SA monitored the big giants and watched how they paid women in construction, SMME businesses, as well as all other SMS, SMME businesses. Because what we found is, is that they sit and they hold the cash once we've paid them and they don't pay you. Yeah. We monitored them, we, we put penalties attached to that, let alone us negotiating to develop women in construction with sustainable skills, their businesses, and even giving ownership into the consortium that we had appointed to build our new home. It is on that note that I say that we're an organization that exists so that service delivery innovation benefits a society at large and not just the big giant companies that are out there. Thank you very much.